Jen. Hello, everybody. This is DFS Chan. And what's your name? Palmer. Palmer. That's right. Um, welcome to our show. Here today, we're going to talk about June 8th. 8th? Yes. And it's June 7th. Today is June 7th, but the okay. game the okay. games we're gonna talk about talking about oh. Yep, June 8th games. We have uh, another five game slate. Um before we dive in though, Palmer looks like he has a message that he wants to show off his muscles, but <laughs> he has a message for you. So let me put a headset on him. Boys and girls, like and subscribe. All right. Um, sorry about the break there, but um, sorry about the pause. But yeah, let's continue the analysis. So here is here are my notes. I wanted to share my screen. Um, as mentioned before, I have posted um, the starters that are expected uh, for the LCK games. And we have confirmed starters for the LPL teams as well. So go check out at DFS Chan on Twitter if you are looking for that information. Otherwise, yeah, let's dive into each matchup. First, RA versus FPX. We have a toss-up, at least based on the Vegas odds. But I have a pretty strong opinion that RA is going to win. Um, the total kills, first of all, the total kills over under is 25 which is the highest um, on the slate, along with the other LPL game that I'll talk about. Um, RA CKPM is fairly high, but I think it's very well, very juiced um, based on their matchups against RNG and BLG. Both teams like to play fast. Um, so I, I do think this is a bit juiced. Um, FPX has a low um, CKPM. Um so we'll see how that how that pans out throughout the season. But yeah, I mean, so far I don't the matchups don't really tell me anything. Playing against Thunder Talk and Ultra Prime, um, they all just play about medium level pace, kill pace. So I think this is gonna be probably around 0.7 ish. Um, in my in my estimation, um, that's probably what it's gonna be. So I think it has a pretty good kill upside, just not great as the numbers may indicate. All right, gold spend percentage difference. All these metrics you see, um, turns out both teams are kind of both shit. Um, like RA and FPX both have negative GSPD, um, but RA slightly has a high high has a slightly higher jungle control percentage. Um, now the EGPM amongst the between the junglers, Leanne. Um, has a higher eGPM compared to um, Hacker. Hacker actually um, has a has one of the lower eGPMs amongst amongst all the LPL junglers. So that is one key metric that I saw um, that kind of stood out for me because just based on the matchups, like I, like I said, Hacker went up against Beichuan, who has not been having the best season really i know he's a good jungler but this split um this summer split so far he has not had the best or a, a very good um performance and then ultra primes uh jungler ning is one of the worst junglers in my opinion um and the lpl he actually had the lowest egpm at the end of the lpl C uh season last year i believe or at, at the end of the, the spring split, rather. So it is not impressive that Hacker... Um, it is a, it's, it's very alarming that Hacker had one of the lowest... Uh, has one of the lowest EGPMs um, in the LPL right now. Ha having played against these guys, I feel like if he were a good jungler, his EGPM would be up. And probably in the middle or upper in the upper enchilant. Echelon. Um, and then RA Leando, I think he just had he's had tough matchups, right? I think he's had tough matchups against Wei in RNG, who really has like one of the highest um EGPMs amongst the LPL junglers. I'll show you here. Um 
yeah, like Wei is up here, and then they he played against BLG's June, who is at the top here, um, playing like one of the best junglers in the world right now. So I think Leanne's numbers are reflective of those tough matchups. I think he is due for positive regression, in my opinion, and he is still above Hacker. So just having gone through that analysis based on their respective matchups, and especially in the jungle position, I think RA is really due for a win here because I think Leanne is going to perform better going up against Hacker. Um, and each lane, each lanes though, um, like top lane, I think has an advantage there for RA and then the support. Now, FPX has an advantage. I saw the EGPM advantage against a, uh, in the AD carry position and the mid lane position for sure. Now, I think the mid lane position is what I'm a little bit concerned about going. I think Strive has had one of the lowest EGPMs and has not been performing well um, after he got, um, you know, uh, subbed in for RA over Mole, I believe. And then Care actually has been playing pretty well for FPX, um, unlike, <laughs> unlike the rest of his teammates. So I really do think it comes down to that mid matchup. If somehow Care can carry that through that mid, -let mid matchup, I think FPX will win, but the current meta um, favors the jungle and the AD carry position, especially in the bottom lane, you know, going through late team fights and everything. Um, so I really like RA to win tonight. That's going to be my firm stance um, probably on the slate as we have the Vegas odds that indicate RA and FPX should be a toss up. So I like RA winning. Um, so that is that is my my prediction. LGD versus JDG. I'll keep this one short as JDG JDG really should win this. LGD have some metrics that they the, that they're favored in, like a jungle <laughs> EGPM, and which is surprising because we know that Kanavi is one of the best junglers in the world. Um, Meteor actually has been playing playing pretty well, but like you see the teams that he played against. Like you saw IG's jungler today, I think this morning or yesterday, Tianjin is one of the worst junglers I probably have, have ever seen at the LPL level. I do think he's going to get benched at some point. So I think that has juiced Meteor's numbers um, after that first matchup. And then going up against Beichuan and Thunder Talk and then Shadow and XLB, I believe he got subbed in. Um, I think Meteor's numbers are a bit juiced and he you know, is going to struggle against Kanavi naturally. Um, so, yeah, I think 369 has been struggling a lot. So Fearness may have an advantage there, to be honest with you. Um, but overall, like Knight Ruler missing should have huge advantages over these uh, the, the counterparts, especially Knight again. Um, I know I said it yesterday and it kind of worked out to our advantage. Um, Knight has a tremendous, tremendous advantage over High Chow. So that would be probably my prize picks or prop bet that I would focus on if I were to kind of give you one solid recommendation there. So yeah, I think JDG is going to win in terms of kill upside. Yeah. I mean, this has a potential where it's going to be very one, one sided lopsided. Um, so JDG could win like 12 to zero or 12 to five. Yeah. It's a, it's possible, but JDG likes to skirmish. So I do think naturally JDG will score well, uh, more than half of the times that they play in now is LGD going to be able to kind of, you know, push that up a little bit. Um, by engaging in team fights, initiating and all that. Um, I think so. I think Meteor is kind of playing off of his confidence um, that after he, you know, is, has been performing well against IG and TT and NIP, I do think that matters a lot when the jungler plays like that. I think he likes to make, tries, tries to make a lot more plays, um, causing a lot more team fights and stuff like that. Um, I think there were a couple games where Meteor was really, really good on Graves. Like he racked up like more than double digit kills in a game. Um, so just given all of that in context, I think they will uh, fight more than often. Um, so I do think this has a pretty good kill upside in this matchup. LNG versus Weibo Gaming is the next and last LPL matchup. Um, I think Weibo Gaming kind of got lucky 
to catch JDG in the MSI hangover spot. I think I mentioned that before on another video, but um, they just look really bad against OMG, in my opinion. Um, especially Weiwei. <clears throat> I know Weiwei like got all hyped up beating it after beating JDG and all that. <clears throat> but imagine losing to Aki for OMG, right? Like I think Weiwei has been exposed a little bit in that series. I think LNG has had a very, very solid series. Um, you know, uh against TES, RNG. And then also JDG, I think they put up a pretty good fight, in my opinion. So I do think this really needs to be like minus 300 or 250, in my opinion, at least. Because I do think LNG should be that much favored over Weibo Gaming, just based on the metrics as well as the eye test that I just talked about. I mean, LNG has an advantage here in every single position, except for the support position. Especially in the jungle spot, I think Tarzan has has a very good has a really good smash spot today. Um, so I think you know the prop bet prop prop bet on Tarzan would be really good as well today. In terms of kill upside, yeah, I think this is pretty good. I think Weibo Gaming has been playing a bit slower, even even they even though they played against JDG who likes to skirmish, and then OMG who likes to skirmish at times. I mean, theirs is at 0.55, I believe. Let's look at that one more time just to believe that it is true. I mean, it is crazy, right? Like you see 0.55, that's really low. So I think this may reduce the kill upside of LNG if they do win. Um, so if I were to rank the LPL three, like all these three game, all three games um, in, in the order of kill upside, I'm going to go... JDG LGD one. I think FPX RA two and then Weibo Gaming and LNG three. That's probably how I'm gonna approach it, I think. Um just based on the fact that RA and FPX probably if they both think they're gonna win. And Weibo Gaming has been slowing down the game a bit. It's just watching them play this season, uh, this split so far. So that is the kill upside ranking. And then in the LCK, we have two games with the total kills over under kind of hovering around 20 and 21, which is, you know, significantly lower compared to the LPL matchups. As we saw today, I think with the LCK matchups earlier this morning, um, LCK still is low in kills, um, even though Damwon Kia, D plus Kia, I believe, has did score really well today. Um, so there is a chance, I mean, but overall, like the chances are that LPL games will produce more kills in general, but just going through the matchups, I think KDF, uh, should win this matchup against DRX. That is my prediction. Um, KDF has had a really good, um, had a very good ending or kdf was in very good form toward the end of the spring split and i think that will continue with the same roster compared to the experiments that the rx is having with the new unproven ad carry 18 year old from the academy challengers level so i rather go with consistency and experience and teamwork um especially early in the split when everything is new and players are rusty coming back from off season Oh, coming back from a break. So I think just based on that, I think KDF is going to win. Um, and the kill upside is okay. I mean, I think this has better kill upside than the last LCK matchup that I'll talk about. But um, even for KDF, I think I would like to focus on Dudu. Dudu has a tremendous advantage just based on the metric that I saw over Rascal. Um, so I will focus on Dudu if I were to play KDF players. And then Freddy Brion or Brion versus Nongshim Red Force. Um, I think this is a pretty clear cut. Um, should be Brion should be favored to win 
just based on the roster comparison, Nongshim's roster is really bad. And they're also playing, they could play the mid new mid laner um, quad, who is kind of, uh, who, he's, he's a young prospect and they have all the hypes around him. Now it's in the mid lane, so I'm not as like thrilled about like a new AD carry like I kind of talked about with Paduk. Um, but I don't think Paduk's very good, to be honest with you. Looking at the metrics from before at the Challenger and Academy level, he did not stand out compared to like some other guys like Pays for Genji and all that. Um, so I'm not too thrilled about that. And I, that's why I didn't really talk about him very much, even though he's starting a new as a new AD carry for ADRX. Um, Fred Abrion is starting the regular five, whereas I think Nong Shimig is again, like if they do start quad or can sub in quad during the series, that could jeopardize a lot of or disrupt a lot of things, um, team chemistry and all that. So I think just given the team chemistry of Fred Abrion, um, I'm gonna go with Brion to win. And they have better players and the better jungler um between Umti and Henna versus Sylvie and Vital, in my opinion, even though that gap is not that big. So that is all I got for you guys today. Um, I do think the kill upside for the last LSK matchup is the lowest. So maybe using the Breon as a team slot, which is possible. So, um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, I know this was a bit shorter than usual because I was prepared to kind of talk about these stats and metrics. I had spent some time to uh, kind of, you know, organize and prepare these. So hopefully these are helpful and informative to you guys as well. Um, hopefully one of you guys, you know, wins a lot of money or wins a ticket. Um, good luck out there uh, this morning. Uh, it, it was profitable for me, except, you know, I was winning a ticket um, until the last stat um, adjustment. Unfortunately, I got knocked knocked off the first place and just went some money instead, but still can't complain. Hopefully, you know, we'll have better luck this uh, tomorrow morning. But otherwise, until then, um, if you guys have any questions, reach out to me at DFS Chan. Um, please uh, hit the like button below if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the True DFS channel. As you can see here, um, we have a True DFS channel where we talk league and some questions if you have any. Uh, feel, uh, feel free to join and yeah, send me a message. Have a good one. Bye-bye.